everyone, Rachel Prophet here with another video in my Getting Started series. I'm a white female with long reddish brown hair that's pulled back today and my pronouns are she, her. I'm wearing a gray t-shirt with a red hoodie with white writing on it today and I'm in my office as usual with my epic sticker wall behind me. In today's Getting Started video, I want to start by talking about the Global Address Book. And we won't have enough time to go through all the details of the Global Address Book, so we'll have a couple more videos on this particular topic that'll dive into specific pieces and parts. But in today's video, I'm going to give you an overview and we'll get started in some of the basic configurations. But before we jump over to the software, I have a diagram that you can find on the docs article called the Global Address Book Overview that will kind of help you understand some of the basics and get used to some of the terminology that I'll be using when I talk about the Global Address Book. I hope you're ready to party because I'm a party. So here we've got the diagram and what I want to do is talk a little bit about that terminology. Dynamics 365 supports an unlimited number of address books, but all of the addresses are stored in what we call the global address book. An address book is simply just a collection of one or more parties. So it's just like party central if you think of it that way. When we use the term party though, we're not talking about like having friends over to your house uh, for you know a drink on Friday night. We're talking about either a person or an organization. And so that address book is a collection of those people. If you think about like um, how your grandmother used to maybe carry around an actual physical address book, the global address book in Dynamics 365 is no different. It's just not on a piece of paper in a little notebook by the telephone. So when we take a look at this diagram, you can see that there are a variety of different types of parties, which are called party roles in Dynamics 365. And this isn't some sort of weird like role playing type party. This is kind of what type of person or organization um, is this particular entry in your address book. And a particular party can have more than one role. Uh, so examples of roles, party roles, are customers, vendors, prospects, competitors, workers, applicants, users, and contacts. But that's not the entire list of the different types of things that people can be. Now a party can also have one or more location. And a location can actually be not just like where they are physically, like a postal address, it can also include things like contact information. Uh, contact information could be a variety of different things like a phone number, an email address. It could even include things like uh, your LinkedIn uh, URL or your Twitter um, handle, for example. Those are all examples of locations in Dynamics 365. And so when we kind of put this all together and you see this bottom square on the right, this is where we have transactions. Our party roles, such as customer, um, can have different types of transactions linked to them. So sales orders, for example, or quotations, or invoices. If we're thinking about a vendor, then we might have things like requests for quotes or purchase orders. This list that you see here is not an exhaustive list of all the different types of transactions that can relate to a party, but when you create a new sales order, as an example, you're going to select a customer, and that customer is related to a party, and that um, specific transaction can have a location. We actually decouple the two because um, all of the data in the address book, like the address and contact information, for example, is date specific. And a sales order might use one address from a customer, while an invoice might use a different type of address from a customer. That relationship is set up between the transaction and the individual parties and the locations that are a part of that party record. So now that we have a basic understanding of some of that terminology, what I want to do is switch on over to Dynamics 365 
and take a look at the process for setting up an address book and reviewing the global address book parameters. So I'm here in Dynamics 365 Finance and Operations and what we're going to do to start out with is we're going to navigate in the modules down to the Organization Administration module. Once we're in the Organization Administration module, you'll find a folder or a section that is named Global Address Book. We're going to start by first taking a look at the Global Address Book itself. This is an inquiry form where you can create new records, but typically you're not going to be creating address records or people or organizations directly from the Global Address Book. You'll typically do it from the customer form or the vendor form and so on. Um, and these records are created behind the scenes. But the nice thing about this is that you can see the full list of all of the different contacts, all of the different people, all of the different organizations, all of your warehouses are actually parties in here as well as an example. You can see the full list of all of them in a single view. It can be searched, you can filter this list down, you can also look at what type of role they have. So if you just wanted to see the vendors, um, or the, the contacts in your address book that have a vendor relationship, you can filter that rule down. When you click on a particular record, I'm going to click on Aid Supply Company here, this will open up the details of that global address book record. Now this isn't your grandmother's address book. We have way more information um, and data that we can track and store against it. Your grandmother was probably just handwriting, you know, a name and an address and maybe a phone number. So you can see that on the general fast tab, we've got basic information. We can have one or more addresses for any given party, and that's part of the location. If we expand the contact information tab, this is where we can add in contact information such as email addresses, phone numbers, and so on. And then the relationships tab will show you anywhere that we have a relationship between parties. It is also possible for parties to be related to each other. So for example, if you're using the human resources functionality in Dynamics 365, you could set up a worker who has multiple beneficiaries or dependents set up. So that's an example where you might have some relationships. The roles tab is where you can see exactly what roles this particular party plays. So in this case, you can see that this party record is related to the USMF company or legal entity. Um, their account number is 1003 and the role they are playing is vendor. It is possible for a single party record to have multiple roles associated with it. You'll also notice up at the top that there are buttons where I can create new records that are related to this party. And we can also update and uh, control the registration IDs, uh, do searches against those registration IDs and so on. So once you've configured all of the details of your global address book, this is where all of the records get created um, and mastered uh, to store the information about a person or organization. We're gonna close this down and go back to the main menu, clicking on organization administration, and we're gonna open up address books. Like I said earlier, when we were looking at that diagram, an address book is a collection of one or more addresses. So in this page, you can see I have a variety of these address books already created. These address books are used in a variety of ways um, to group records. Uh, that can be used for the commerce functionality in deciding which customers to synchronize to a retail point of sale, for example. It can also be used to control security around um, you know, groups of users in different regions. Um, and who has rights to see what in your human resources module as another example. There's no limit to how many address books you create. Um, what you'll do is you'll click that new icon to create a new one, enter in a name and a description, and then you'll select the teams. Now we haven't created teams, but teams are another concept in the organization hierarchy. And we'll take a look at those in a future video. When you assign teams to an address book, then you are indicating that the users or the workers in those teams have security and have access to the addresses within that address book. Now, once you've created at least one address book, um, you'll want to go ahead and take a look at and configure your global address book parameters. 
So in the global address book parameters page, there are two tabs. We have the general tab and the private location security. The general tab is where I can select some basic parameters. Some of these require that you need to set up like name sequence, for example. You'll need to create a name sequence before you can um, select a, an option here. The default data in the system comes with a variety of name sequences, but you can create new ones if you don't like the standard ones that are provided with the default data. You can also decide whether or not you want to allow uh, parties to be deleted if they have no roles. You can also enable duplicate checking. There are two parameters here to control whether or not you want DUNS information to be displayed on addresses and whether or not you want to check for unique DUNS numbers. You can also select the default record type. Uh, so when you think about the default record type, this is important when you're creating customers or vendors, for example. You can select if that's going to be an organization or a person. Uh, that way, when you click the new icon in either the, the global address book or in customers or in vendors, this will determine if it's going to default to be an organization or a person. In a retail organization, for example, most of your customers are likely to be individual people. So you would likely select person. In a business where most of your um, you know, customers and most of your business is done with other businesses, you would typically select organization. There's some additional fields here where you can select the default record type for different types of organizations. So again, where you can select that default for parties, you can select that for customers, vendors, prospects, and competitors. Once you're done creating and setting up these basics, you'll want to have a look at the private location sec security. Private location security is um, related to a checkbox. Every time you create an address, you can mark a checkbox to indicate that it is a private location. If you've marked the private location checkbox on an address, this means that only uh, users in these particular security roles will be allowed to see those addresses. So in my demonstration data, we've limited private um, addresses to our human resources and payroll personnel and no one else in the organization can see those addresses. So I'm going to close this down. The last thing we're going to take a look at today is those name sequences which are found right underneath the address books. We're going to click on name sequences which will open up a new page. Like I said, the default data does provide a number of these out of the box depending on how you want to store the data in the database and how you want to view it when you're searching for users will change kind of what you uh, create here. And so um, you can use these uh, standard ones, but if you want to use a different one, you can do that. Um, that's it for today's getting started video. Be sure to subscribe, like, and turn on that bell or click that bell icon for notifications. Um, and we'll see you next time on Dynamics 365 Unboxed.